front end that's got the highest concentration. It's the highest contributor, if you like, to the MMC. So it's how that starch is, is um, digested is really critical. Katie Watts, this one, this lady here, she did a lot of work up at Gatton, and she would actually be the um, pioneer of all this stuff in America. She just, all the time, she's on about fructan. So you've got fructan levels of 15% varying down to 5%, 8%, 10%. So you've got some of our feed sitting up here, so really, really high fructan levels, which we don't, didn't even know that was a possibility. So again, in the grass is exactly the same correlation when I put all that together. So here's my horses. The girls that work for me laugh at me, but this is the simple way I look at it. That if we're feeding a high sugar starch diet, it goes into the stomach, we know that the stomach's two pumps. We know that if acid gets up in that squame, is it squame as you call it, or the thin wall up the front, we will get ulcers, there's no question. If we don't have roughage in here, and we've got acid dripping in, you can get it. So that's pretty much known. Horses have got a limited ability to digest starch in the intestine. Two, and it's about 200 grams per 100 kilo body weight. So what's going to happen? Anything and fructan is going to get into here. And once it gets there, this is exactly the same as the rooming in the cow. Same concept. You're going to get a change in the in the microorganisms there and there. You get a pH drop. You get acidosis. Lactic acid produced, that's what's causing laminitis. But also, when the fructan gets in there, it's actually changed the microbial speciation. And again, Pollock, if he was here, he could tell the whole story about this, how this is actually causing laminitis. So those two are pretty much known, but the one's not known. And when Chris <coughs> came to see us, he said, this is causing 20% of the laminitis, so I want to know about the other 80%. What's causing? Because he could actually Infuse in insulin and he could cause laminitis in a horse with, him, with a couple of hours. So my contention is that if we think about pulpy kidney and cattle, um, if you've got cattle there not vaccinated and you get a lot of soluble sugars come through, it's the biggest fasting grower one will die from pulpy kidney because you're getting this abnormal growth of organisms living in here. So if we're overloading with sugars in particular and it gets to here. There's a term called dysbiosis or leaky gut syndrome, which now if you read about that, that's now becoming um, more and more prevalent in the literature. Change of microbial speciation there, allowing stuff to get through that never did before. So we're now getting this massive pool of circulating glucose. We've got glucose coming from here, we've got it coming from here and here. And if you then read about, there's a lot of work being done now on the bacteria in the gut here, and what they're trying to decide in humans is, is it the change in the bacteria in the gut that's causing um, diabetes, or is it diabetes causing the change here? And thinking that there's actually 10 bacterial cells to every one of ours, we're actually the host of bacteria, not the other way around. So there's a whole science of this blind bacteria. But just going with my logic, if we've got this huge big pool of glucose, the horse has got to get rid of it somehow. If that switches on insulin, I talked before, that'll push it into fat. It's simple. We'll get this one here, Valberg and um, Beth Valentine. They've done all this work in the US to prove that one works. It's just an abnormal polysaccharide to get rid of glucose. Proteoglycans are formed, so the glucose and a protein molecule will hook together. And in some horses, you'll get this stocking up. And they've done all that work in, in athletes. Obviously, with insulin getting pushed up, we'll get insulin resistance, which again, with cortisol, will cause this. With Cushing's, my contention is that when you look at the relationship between insulin, cortisol, and dopamine, that the higher the cortisol, the lower the dopamine. So if you're just forcing that up, it tells me the horse has got to force it somewhere and allow that part of the to grow. That's just simple logic on my part. The, if Wayne Bryden was here from Gatton, they did a lot of work on gestational diabetes in mares. And in women, they know that last trimester, if they get diabetic then and compromise the fetus, that kid could be predisposed to diabetes by the age of 10. So if we're then feeding mares on grain and we continue feeding the final grain, I don't see any reason why this couldn't be actually diet related. Unfortunately, it's not that argument. But. <laughs> But the logic is there, you know, and we're seeing it. So, hang on, going back to what you are saying about gestational diabetes and causing diabetes in, 
you know, the child potentially, would that be type one or type two? Type two. Well, the type one one's not proven, you see, because it's a hard one to prove. Yeah, that's what I was just wondering. Yeah. Yeah. But it's the type two one's coming through. The type two, type one is more genetic, they're saying, mm -hmm. but again, it's, I mean, there's so much in this that we don't know, you know. They're saying now that it's the grandmother that's actually determining what's happening with kids that far back in the familiar relationship. You know? mm -hmm. I mean, I read all this stuff, you know, talking to himself to sleep, and it, it, you never read enough to find out. I don't know the answer to it, but it's intriguing when you start just challenging the whole thing as to what's the cause of aging. We haven't changed, the horses haven't changed, something's changed. Yep. So, if all this stuff getting through to the hind gut, I just put that in there that it's actually pushed up this, this, this propionate, which actually gets converted through glucogenesis to produce glucose. So there's where the glucose is coming from. So if you've got grain getting through to the hind gut, not only does it cause acidosis, high levels of propionate, and there's where the big amount of glucose is coming from. So going back to these guys, then we selected Nerida and I, we fed, we took um, three feeds at 11, 25, and 33% MSC. We fed them to horses at pasture. We we simply put it in a nose bag so we knew exactly what they eat. And they were getting two ki two point, well, nearly three kilos a day, so it's quite a significant amount. And then we bled them because we wanted to know what was the effect <coughs> on the glucose and the insulin. So here's the pasture, 7% NSC, and over the six hours that we bled those horses, there's no effect on my glucose. These two here, and again, it doesn't matter what the names are, but 25 and 33% NSC gave a massive spike in insulin sorry, in glucose, and we know from human diabetics on the last thing we want are these spikes. And interestingly for us, with this copper milk product we've got, it didn't cause any spike in insulin at all. Sorry, in glucose. In insulin, it was a similar story, except that we got a, a, a small spike here, which when we did the stats was biologically insignificant. So I went back and I said, I, I didn't understand this. Then I found what Merritt had done is that going all the way back out here to six o'clock the night before, she actually locked these horses up and didn't feed them. So they went all through the night. They got fed here, and then they continued to be starved, if you like, out to here before they put them back on pastures. So these guys here were out on pasture. These were locked up all night. And going right back to the horse having to eat, and I think this was actually a pavlov dog response. Says me, but you know, when we looked at it, and then I sent it off and said to people, well, is that significant? They said no. So, really, they come up with this concept of slow versus fast foods. The horse that fed twice a day would suggest this fast food is causing these spikes in insulin in particular, like this. And the slow feed, and this is what I think is, is a possibility for us, is that if we can find feeds that don't cause those insulin glucose spikes, we can probably feed them twice a day, which is convenient for us. So let me just talk a bit about this, um, just to share with you the science behind it. And that I got involved in this well, a fair while ago now. In the tropics, that the coconuts fall down to the trees and they put cattle underneath it to actually mow the grass down so they can find them. This is part of the, the agricultural system. They said, can you do something with the, with the cattle? We fed them whatever we could find. What they did, they cut the coconut in half, they take this white meat in the middle and they crush it to get the oil out. And then that oil is what gets sold around the world, as coconut oil. What's left over, that white bit's gone brown because it's been heated and that's called cockerel milk. So I fed that to the cattle and they did what they did like that one I showed before. And the few horses that I had there, they actually started to shine up. So we, sh we shipped some to Australia, did a lot of work with cattle on it and then got it realised how good it was for cattle and then the story started with the horses. So this is how it's sold, but the it's 11% sugar and starch and we've done that hundreds of times. It's 20% protein and people get a bit, they think that's too high, but when you think all we feed is that, so two kilos a day plus hay, and then you average the two out, it works at about eight to 10% protein. 10% oil, 15% crude fibre, and this one, we get it done through Symbio in Brisbane, but it's 15 DE, so very high energy and low NSC, which means it's one of the very few feeds, if you like, that's out there where it's got the low sugar and starch, but it's getting a high level of energy. 
One of the significant things I think about it is that if you add water to it, it'll swell to about three to four times its own volume. And I think that's an aid to digestion. People get, they all the time say, that's the horse is gonna get swollen guts and die. You can, I could have another one there with uh, beet pulp, I could have another one with half the other feeds that are out there that swell. Why they carry on about it, I have no idea. But to me it's an aid to